Hey, what's up guys? Solid Dubs here and today I'm doing a video review on the Acer Predator Z35P. So yes, the extra P adds a lot of extra res resolution and changes the refresh rate. Now before I get into the specs, let's talk about price. Now in the UK, it's actually kind of hard to find. I found it between £1,000 and £1,400, whereas in the US, I found it for $1,100. Links will be down in the description below um, if, in case you're interested. Now in terms of specs, it's a 35 inch ultra wide monitor, it has a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, it has a VA panel, it runs at a quoted response time of 4 milliseconds, which I'll get into in just a bit in the gaming section of this review. It has a uh, maximum uh, resolution of 3440 times 1440p, which runs at 100 hertz. However, that can be overclocked via the on screen display to 120 hertz, which I'll get into in a bit. In terms of inputs, you've only got two inputs that's HDMI um, and a display port, and it has two 9 watt speakers. Now, I must say, in terms of as far as audio goes, I think it's one of the most impressive um, monitors I've heard in terms of audio but uh, that's that's nothing too special but something I should uh, mention other specs will be in the description below so make sure you check them out now let's go into the build quality of the monitor now first of all as you can see it's a beast it's massive you're gonna make sure it fits on your desk as you can see right in here I've got my IKEA Freddy desk and it does not fit on my desk at all so it is huge it's absolutely big and you will make want to make sure it fits now in terms of uh, adjustments, it's got a height adjustment and tilt, and a tilt adjustment is actually massive. And also through its uh, clever stand, you've got a great pivot system, which means that the stand stays sturdy, whereas in, uh, on the, it's got like a, a joint which essentially moves around, allowing you to move the, um, move the monitor around. The bezels are not, uh, not too thick, however they're uh, relatively chunky, which means the screen kind of sits behind uh, behind the bezel, uh, which makes it look a little bit uh, chunkier than you'd be uh, than you'd expect. Nevertheless, it's not a big deal. You've got a nice Predator logo at the front and at the back, and I should also mention on the right hand side you've got um, four uh, USB uh, 3.0 ports, one of which support, uh, supports fast charging for your smartphone, which again you can enable through the OSD. In terms of build quality, what Acer have done is fantastic. You've also got a handle at the back, but there is no um, headphone stand uh, which you can find on um, rival uh, monitors. So build quality wise, I've got no real complaints, and I think Acer have done a great job, especially with the stand, a solid metal stand which keeps the monitor in place. Now let's talk about picture quality. Now the picture quality is good. It's not fantastic, but it's good. Now this runs on a VA panel, uh, which means that you get fantastic contrast ratios. Flicking through a few images, you'll be able to see that the uh, panel looks really nice. If I just reduce the EV of um, my camera, so you get a little bit more of accurate um, reproduction, and I just get a little bit closer so you guys can see. Now, you'll be able to see that the images come out really nice. Now, yes, do excuse the uh, image to be a little bit stretched out because the wallpapers are 2560 times 1440p. Um, however, Colors are vibrant and I was very much impressed with it. It is very, very slightly washed out versus what I'm actually used to and that's an IPS panel by Acer themselves. Um, so in comparison to other VA panels, I think this does a really good job in reproducing rich uh, color accurate, um, uh, color accurate um, colors. <laughs> um, accurate colors is what I'm trying to look for. And uh, just generally speaking, I'm very impressed. Now I ran it through a calibrator as well and the results were actually very good. It hit 99.3% sRGB with 84.2% uh, DCI-P3. In terms of luminance, it reached um, 340 Kelvin. Now, if you were to enable sRGB mode, that will bring it down to 280 uh, Kelvin. So uh, do bear that in mind if you're going to use an sRGB mode versus a user mode or any other mode uh, out there because the brightness control is unlocked. You might realize that you can change brightness when you're on sRGB mode, but that will automatically disable sRGB mode as soon as you touch the brightness levels. So just something I should mention uh, in terms of of that no problem in terms of brightness uh, you can use it in a dark uh, lit room or a bright sunlit room I had no problems with that in sRGB mode you might be just a little bit more limited uh, given the fact of its uh, capped brightness levels 
Now, um, a lot of people ask me how is uh, backlight bleed and how is uh, IPS glow. Now, obviously, this is a, a VA panel, but you can see in the picture I took, it's actually not bad. You've got a decent representation of um, of the panel over here with the top edges a little bit um, uh, suffering from the IPS kind of glow or that backlight bleed, shall I say. So. Generally speaking, it's actually quite good for a uh, monitor of its size. And again, I ran it through a calibrator and uh, the uh, uniformity check was, um, it was decent and not amazing, but it was decent given the fact of the uh, panel. It suffered a little bit on the top left hand side and the, um, uh, the middle section of the right. Again, to be expected with a panel this size. And of course, if you're gonna be doing any sort of color uh, calibration and stuff like that, you probably wouldn't pick a monitor like it to do full screen color editing and make sure it's accurate from left to right and center and everything like that. But you can see the center is actually uh, relatively good, but as soon as you start going to the edges, you start having a little bit more problems. Now in terms of um, color calibration, I run it through the uh, i1 Display Pro. It uh, registered a 1.69 average delta E, which is uh, quite good. In terms of its uh, contrast ratio, very impressive at uh, 2,043 to one contrast ratios, which is to be expected given the fact that it's a VA panel. And it's got impressive black levels of 0 0.139 as well. So generally speaking, very nice in terms of blacks and whites. Um, when it comes to colors, it's very good given the fact that it's a gaming monitor, so don't expect all, all, all that much about it. Now, what about gaming? Now, first of all, I should mention it has NVIDIA G-Sync built in. Something I forgot to mention at the beginning of the review, but it's actually very important. As generally speaking, that does uh, bring up the price of a monitor. Now, NVIDIA G-Sync means that it locks, uh, locks the frame rate of the monitor with your graphics card and therefore avoids any tearing. Now, right now, I'm just going to be launching some Counter-Strike and you'll be able to see um, uh, how it performs in terms of ghosting. Um, however, um, it, in, that, uh, in the respect of, um, in the respect of uh, G-Sync, it's going to work flawlessly as long as uh, you you have a compatible NVIDIA graphics card. If you're on AMD, you're not going to be able to use it. And no, it doesn't have AMD FreeSync, so do bear that in mind. So this is really geared towards uh, NVIDIA gamers out there. Now, to enable that, you're first going to have to go through the OSD, and via the OSD, you're going to have to enable uh, G-Sync, uh, which is very easy to do, um, and it pretty much is an automatic process, but nevertheless, it's worth uh, looking through it and making sure it's there. And also through the... Um, um, OSD, you can see its max refresh rate. Now it's overclock mode is on and off, and uh, if you were to choose on, you can choose the maximum refresh rate of 120 um, refresh rate. Now this is what the monitor is running on right now, and I must say, uh, when I um, ran it through um, UFO, UFO frame skipping tests, it passed all the certifies tests at 100 hertz and 120 hertz without any frame skipping problems. So I didn't have any problems with that, uh, so uh, you don't have to worry about frame skipping. Now, in terms of its gaming performance um, with G-Sync, fantastic for G-Sync. Obviously, Counter-Strike is probably not the best game to show G-Sync, but if you're playing games like Battlefield 1, uh, then you're going to really benefit from G-Sync's uh, capabilities. Now, in terms of its input lag, it's not amazing, uh, nor neither is it poor. It's, it's average. Now, would I be using it for competitive gaming? Probably not. And if I'd be using it for competitive gaming, I probably wouldn't be picking a monitor of its size. However, if you're a bit more of a casual gamer, but still playing a game like Counter-Strike, which is very competitive, then yes, you could play it with it. I wouldn't have any problems. Now, in terms of its uh, response time, the response time is slow when it's on the standard mode setting. I have put it to the normal setting because it gives me kind of like a midway. You might be wondering, why don't you use it on extreme mode? Well, when I pop it on extreme mode, um, you might be able to see now on the camera, but it's picking up a lot of inverse ghosting. And it means the, it, the image is very, very poor. And even though you got the best response time from the monitor, it does look very blurred out and doesn't look good at all. If, you, if you're gonna be using it um, for competitive gaming, uh, in all honesty, you can put it on extreme mode if you so wish, but in all honesty, you're gonna be um, you're gonna be distracted by the ghosting. So turn it down to normal. If you're playing more casual games, go between off or normal, depending on uh, the game and depending on how the inverse ghosting affects your game uh, specifically. In other words, if you've got a lot of uh, greenery or a lot of scenes like in H1Z1, you might notice 
actually off overdrive is better than normal uh, because you'll notice a little less uh, ghosting that occurs. Normal, go uh, normal mode, as I said, has very minimal ghosting, uh, but it's, um, it's, it's acceptable. Let's put it that way, and it's something I would use. So now, is this a monitor for uh, competitive gamers? No, uh, but it can be used if you're a more casual S gamer. And if you're looking at it to play for casual games, then you'll have absolutely no problems with it. So overall, what do I think of the monitor? Well, it's got it's got a lot of um, good things included. It's got the uh, good resolution. It's got Nvidia G-Sync. It's got a very cur it's got a curved um, a monitor uh, with a 1800R curvature, and it's got um, VA panels which are actually quite accurate. However, its price lets it down. It's way too expensive. For the same price, I would r much rather go for the AOC AG352 UCG. Offers the pretty much the same specifications at a much lower price. Alright guys, I've been Tony Dub. Make sure you subscribe and take care. Bye bye.